Recording in progress. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Good morning. All the way over there. Uh -huh. I'm trying to get good video. Good morning. People will be late. Even though I left the back door open for them to easily come. Over there. Sorry. Hi everyone, my name is Lee Hodge. I am the former head loss mitigator for the Mac Bank's HELOC division, and I am simply not wired like the rest of you. I have been in banking and real estate since 1980. I started at the age of three, and that's my story, and I'm sticking to it at this point. Women can do it, I should be allowed to do it as well. Let me give you a quick breakdown of our day and what we will be going through. Uh, normally, these come with PowerPoints and all kinds of circus acts and I don't know, programming type of thing. I, I'm just not in that mood this weekend for some reason. I thought I'd just come out here and let it fly and let you tell you tell you what the real numbers are and what's really happening in the market with foreclosures. And then be fairly serious because I knew I'd actually have some of my students here do some very serious marketing for most of the day and show you guys how to get in front of people, how to work with people. It's kind of been our focus as of late. Uh, I will speak for about 15 or 20 minutes about the market and let you know. I, I'm guessing everybody either believes that there will be foreclosures or there will not be foreclosures at this point. Um, so I don't think I have to work too hard on that one today. Uh, then I will have our CEO of Fred Sullivan come up here for a couple of minutes and talk about some referral marketing and some ideas. Normally he brings all kinds of crazy stuff to help you guys out, which is mind blowing every time he does it. And then I'll jump in and I'll do the meaty heavy lifting. Of, we'll, we'll cover all three. Sound fair. We'll do referral based marketing, we'll do direct marketing, we'll do digital marketing today. And I will give you very exact focuses on those things. Simple enough? Yes. All right, let's give you your market update as of Valentine's Day 2022. <sighs> Where are we? Well, when we last left the media in November of last year, we were facing a horrendous supply chain shortage. We were also faced with 10 million evictions. We were also faced with millions of people who had forbearance agreements. And then we had Thanksgiving and it all went away and it isn't happening anymore. I'm working very hard over my sarcasm at this moment because I don't know what else to say. <laughs> If it's not talked about in the media, and by the way, any of you that create any videos, your media, you're as much media as their media, okay? I have had enough of this, the narratives and the media. If you can record a video, you are officially the media in my book, okay? It's just content. The content ended at Thanksgiving and we went into a new story for the country. We had new issues. We had war. Woo, that's new this year. We're good at that. Uh, what we have is hyperinflation. What we have are 3 million people who've missed payments. We have another 7 million renters that I still have not heard a viable solution. We have a FICO system that has been turned off now for three straight years that nobody's talking about. So the million dollar question thus becomes, Lee, I work in the real estate industry. How does this benefit me? Good question. That would probably be why at this exact moment as we speak, the mass exit uh, entry of literally a million real estate agents because it was booming has now turned around and everybody's leaving real estate and not working in real estate all of a sudden. I can't imagine why that is. Um, I have theories. I can tell you what I think and I can tell you what I know. I prefer to stick with stuff I know. Here's what I know. There are approximately, depending on whose reports you read, uh, somewhere between 400,000 to a million transactions in the United States. That means that you have several million real estate agents fighting over those listings for the transaction. On top of that, you've got a real estate market that is 100% driven by investors. That's a real problem. Because the biggest investor that everybody is sleeping on affected the market went into the market, then got out of the market, and nobody said boo about it, not a, not a soul. And I was recording this with some of my people last week. I was hoping that they would pick up on what I was, what the 
was cooking on the topic. And this is what the topic was. Zillow was buying properties based on their ridiculous damn estimates and inflating the market so that they could turn around and sell properties at a, at a profit. They did this up until about November of last year and then they got out of town and then sold off all their real estate and then fired half the company. I talked about this last week, I'll record it for the first time ever. It's because of one piece of data that they found. Yes, probably the Department of Justice and probably some other legal entities got involved and probably breathed down their necks for their activities of artificially inflating your real estate market. Also, based on the data, New York has suddenly gone flat. It's no longer appreciating. New York, market number one, stop. I'm not saying Las Vegas, I'm not saying LA, I'm not saying San Diego. New York is dead, flat, stop, done. Zero appreciation projected for this year. Now, if you're wondering, will that affect the media? And will that affect people? And will that affect you here in Las Vegas? Everything I just told you is about to affect what's about to happen in real estate. Is there a real estate crash is the question that we're all leading up to. There is not a real estate crash, there's a real estate correction. I stop, I, I'm done with the word crash. That's cheap, it's like parlor tricks. That's what you say to sell something. Ah, it's gonna crash, buy this, fix this. It's correcting again. We've had investors buying properties and inflating the market. There are no real, I probably talk about this, but the, the guidelines are so strict. And the narrow margin of people that actually qualify for real bank lending is ridiculous. Then you go out and shop for some of the crap that's out there on the market and all that stuff's being flipped back to FHFA. So, ooh, there's all the scary market doom, doom stuff. All of it very findable. This is easy Google stuff. This is right on the Zillow website. This is, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't have to try hard. This was, I was just more concerned with why did Zillow wake up one day, tell the world that the market was gonna appreciate 11%. We talked about this a week ago. And then suddenly, yeah, we don't buy real estate anymore, even though we know it's appreciated. That's an interesting projection. And it was at the bottom of 23,000 zip codes that I looked at. At the very bottom was market number one. That would scare the crap out of me if I were in any kind of loss mitigation group seeing that market one was about to go flat when the rest of the world is skyrocketed. Because the truth is the content creators are all from New York. Some of them are called Fox, some of them are called CNN, but they're just content creators reading scripts. And once this all starts getting played out again, like the supply chain shortage that hasn't gone away, or hyperinflation, which we all know, it's not even cheap to get gas in Vegas anymore. Um, this, is, this is not going away. This all has to correct. And that's opportunity for all of you. That is also, difficult when people start finding out that they bought at the top of the market and they no longer have the value. And if you don't recall 2007, we called it a strategic default. It was quite spectacular. And we are playing this out not to the letter. I mean, it's almost identical. I, I, everything is identical. Like I keep looking for, I feel crazy at this point. Everything is so identical that when I worked in a bank and I saw this and this all did the same thing, people all looked at me and all the loan groups and all the places and said, no, you're just gloom and doom and you're a banky guy. Boo, 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 boo. I'm sad to report that generally speaking, my experience at this point, after 30 plus years of being in a suit and telling people about banking and real estate and distressed properties, People are idiots. You can tell them the sky is falling, but until the damn thing hits their foot and breaks it, they're not gonna do a darn thing about it. And it makes me mental. We are at the very top of a very large market correction. And Las Vegas, sadly, is one of the biggest markets. You guys can't, the appreciation is dumb. You don't understand, we, we'll get new properties and we'll just eat them up like a sponge. All right, how many would that be exactly? 
do you think you could just take overnight without affecting the value of property around here? I mean, realistically, because that's what I get. I got it on a call last week out of Arizona. You don't understand. We have no properties. People just eat them right up. All right, let's talk about 3 million properties coming online. And you being in one of the markets that was hardest hit by COVID with unemployment, with people who sure as hell cannot afford what the current payments are structured for this tax. I would safely go out on a limb. Don't think, no. I am trying not to curse because I'm sure Sally's going to watch this and Laurie's grandma's here, so I'm going to try to behave. It's going to be a crap show. Okay, that's it. That's, I, I know no other way to say what's going to happen because once people who don't pay, don't pay, the other people who don't pay, don't pay, and so on and so on. As of January 1st, all the banks were required to file a 90 day filing on all people. So they started the clock on January 1st. I actually thought that there would be a bigger wave. We've only increased by 334% activity in foreclosure activity since the first of the year, 334. Not that bad, not that bad, small. <sighs> Maybe I am better without a power. Feeling a little saucy today. Talent, love in the air. Taking the edge off the banker. All right. Come March 15th or so, probably the end of March, right around the time of our mastermind, I suspect it will be a foreclosure coming out party. I don't suspect, I know. I know what the filing lines are. I know how many are in there. I know how far they are from being behind on COVID. They're just wading through the pile of poo. But this is going to start. The whole focus of you being here today, including my own people that are here today, and the reason I'm recording for all of you as well, is very simple. Our goal and our focus in our company is to do one thing, and that is to educate homeowners. We teach them nine things. That is all I ask of you. After you teach them nine things, you can do whatever you want. If you're an investor, buy it. If you're a real estate agent, sell it. I don't care. I have one goal for 1 million homeowners. Ooh, lack of sleep. All right, so that's what we're doing today. That one hit me? Really? Sorry, I don't have feelings. So when they hit me, they're very amusing. <sighs> that's our goal, that's what we do. Uh, Home Advocates was created uh, March 31st, approximately one year ago. Uh, and in that time span, we've uh, managed to get a bunch of agents involved and get people onto the right track. We've actually got the systems up to speed. We're gonna talk about all of those things today. Here's an opportunity if you, come on in. Don't just stick your head in, just come in. I came out on a motorcycle and appeared David Copperfield style, and it was amazing, especially in this small space. You are now off All right. This is your opportunity to ask very direct marketing questions, uh, market questions. And then I'm just going to focus on what matters. How do you meet these people right now? Where are they hiding? What rocks are they under? And starting the process. We'll talk about everything in very graphic detail, but I want to make sure nobody has any questions about what the current market is like. Going once. I just have to get a bit very on time event. I'm feeling that, which means I could spend more time on marketing. Did it cover everything? How was it? Good. Not too asshole. Huh? Okay. No, no, no. Certainly, we're talking about the user. Though. All right. I'm going to take this opportunity to bring up our chief operating officer, Fred Solomon, to talk to you for a few minutes about referral based marketing and what he sees on the mortgage side. I am going to get out of looking like a banker and go put on my flip flops and do my favorite thing, which is talk about marketing for the next couple of hours. Fair enough. Fred Solomon. Hi, everybody. Oh, great. I know a lot of you, or a few of you. So, am I in the? Oh, I'm in the right spot. Good. I 
sense. <laughs> so for me, what Lee wants me to help you guys with is how to make your phone ring, how to create business for yourself. And right now for realtors, we all know that listings are bread and butter. You can literally put a house on the market and 11 off, you know, 11 appointments in two days and eight offers out of the 11, you know, the house is sold and then it's 10, 20% above the asking price. It's not too much work to get a listing sold today. Doing staging and any of that stuff that you had to do before to get, you know, all these offers in, you don't really have to do that today. I mean, you'll create more activity by doing that, but that's not really that necessary opposed to, you know, four years ago, right? So where do all your referrals come from? For most of you, where are you getting your referrals from? Yeah. Past clients, right? Well, you're not supposed to answer because yeah. you already know. <laughs> so if your past clients are the ones giving you all the referrals, what marketing are you doing to them? Are you doing any marketing to your past clients? Or you just assume that they're going to call you? You work them. Okay, so how do you work them? Oh, good. So you know Brian Buffini and, and the note cards, 10 note cards a day, and blah, 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 right? Is there anything else that you think would be beneficial to do more than what he's telling you? But, like, how do you, what are other ways to contact your previous clients? You can pick up the phone and call them, right? Happy birthday. Right? Okay, so you can call them. What else can you do? Okay. But that's, I have 17,000 previous clients. <laughs> So that's a lot of popping by. And I can prove it to you. I have, they're on my, I have a whole list. Um, so, so if you have a large database, that would be more difficult. Would you agree? But it's definitely good to do that. You know, show your face. And I'm in the mortgage business and it's a little bit more difficult to meet the clients in person when you're in the mortgage industry, opposed when you're in real estate, you're handing them keys, you're doing the home inspection, you're there for the appraisal, blah, 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 right? So, so okay, so we figured out you can call them, you can show up in person. What else can you do with your previous clients? Email. Right. Now, do you read your emails? Yeah. Even the ones that go in the junk and spam folder, you don't read those? I do. Scroll through. Because I know that I can miss my clients. I know I can miss emails. And for me, my email is it's my money source, right? That's where I'm getting my people. They always email me. I'm like, you guys have my number. I get text messages a lot more now than ever before, but that's only in the last couple of years. But most of the time, it's an email. So I'm really careful to make sure that I don't miss any emails, which includes the junk, spam, and clutter folder. So don't be afraid to look in there, even though it takes a lot of time every day. But one day, if I find one in there, ah, it feels so good to find those that didn't end up in my inbox. Okay, so email is the most amazing thing you have of your past client. Now, I'm gonna tell you something that, does everybody have Facebook in here? Okay. Do you know, um, everybody should have like a Facebook business page, do you know? Do you have that? No. Right? Okay, do you know that you can take your previous client email addresses this is i just want to tell you how 
this, what this did for me. Like, this was like, if there was the gold miners when they were, you know, digging for gold in the 1800s and the first gold miner to strike gold. This is what this I'm about to tell you was worth to me. It was the best thing that I've ever done in my entire lifetime. It was so powerful for me that I was like, I can't believe that I figured this out. I mean, that's what it did for me. I get so much business from Facebook. It's unbelievable. And I'm so thankful for that. But let me tell you how I do it. Because who are the people on Facebook? These are all people that know you. They're all people that trust you and hope, well, they might like you if they like you. And then if they trust you, guess what? That's like your best people. These are all people that know who you are. Like, I can't tell you how many people from my grade school years you know, when I was in sixth, seventh, eighth grade and I'm friends with all of them on Facebook, you got to connect with these people. These are people that know you. Now, if you're from, you know, if you're living in Vegas and they're, you know, in Chicago, that may not be the best. But if you're, you know, here and this is where they are, then yes, you need to connect with these people. Absolutely. Because here's what you can do with that email address. You can upload it to your Facebook business page. Guess what Facebook does for you? They tell you if that email address has a Facebook profile. So out of 17,300 and something emails that I have in my database, guess how many of them have Facebook profiles associated with the email address that I have on file? Take a guess. 90%? Yeah. Actually, it's for mine, I have just over 10,000. So it's the 10 17. So what is that? Five eighths. So maybe like 60 something percent in that neighborhood. But how can you get in front of 60% of your clients in seconds? You ever see those things on Facebook where it says sponsored ad? All right. Did you know that if you got that, that you were target marketed to, you met the criteria of that advertiser and what that advertiser was looking for. And Facebook knows so much about you, you have no idea. That's why they're in court. Because they know too much about you. So, so what, when you take your email list and you upload it to your Facebook business page, that's called a, what's the term? It's like custom a, a, a custom list. Exactly. Thank you. So looks like you already know how to do that. Now, each impression is four cents to my custom list. Four cents. All right. How much does it cost to make a postcard? How much is it? The time, the stamps. Someone's got to do all that it's forever. And then I can get in front of my clients on a custom list for four cents an impression. Holy cow. It's genius. Absolutely genius. Because again, these are people that know you, like you, and trust you, right? Now, now this you had to do a good job for your previous clients. This is kind of like the unspoken word. You had to do a good job. If you didn't do a good job, do not market to your previous clients. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> but if you did a good job, oh my God, to not market to them, to not pick up the phone and call them, to not send them a personal note card like the Buffini group teaches, and to not show up and say hello is a crime. Because these are the people that you don't have to sell yourself to. 
Let me explain the word what about marketing. Okay, this is what I always say when I do my own events and Lee comes and speaks at my own events. Let's say oh, you're not a very good salesperson. You're just not. It's okay. You can still make a lot of money in this business. Six figures if you get good at marketing. Okay, let's say you're an average salesperson. An average salesperson with good marketing skills. Okay, you're good for 200,000 a year, no problem, right? But if you're good at sales and at least average or good at marketing, you know what I tell people? Go outside and look up in the sky because the sky is the limit for you. How busy do you want to get? That's the question. How busy do you want to get? And like for 2022, my motto for this year was too much free time on your hand is not good, right? Too much, too bit being too busy is not good. I had 20 hour work days going to sleep at one in the morning and waking up at five. It was not healthy. And I understood the term working myself to death. Trust me, I learned that term. I was one of the top 50 mortgage producers in the United States of America. I closed $188 million. Just my own personal production. So I'm not, I'm only telling you things that worked for me, like the hair club president for men, it worked for me. So you either listen to what I'm telling you and do it, or you don't. But this is free information. I'm not getting anything out of it. Yes, I am a mortgage guy, but probably most of you are local and I'm not approved to do business in Las Vegas. So if even if you referred me, I couldn't, I would refer you to people I know because I don't do loans here. So this is strictly to help you. But if you have people that you know that might be buying in California, all right, give them my name and number. Great, thank you. But if not, Take this information and do something with it. Because I send out an email newsletter as well. Okay, not these cheesy um, recipe emails. Okay, content, right? And Lee's gonna talk about the content that you need to have. Let me just uh, share with you one of my recent posts, which was exactly in line with what Lee was talking about earlier in Zillow, because him and I are on the same page with this stuff. And I'm going to scroll down my Facebook page. And it says, okay, let's see here. Give me a second here. I should have probably had this all pulled up. All right, here we go. February 2nd. Zillow's actions and words aren't measuring up. Homeowners, if you're thinking of selling, seriously, please listen and watch this video. It's 18 minutes long. Lee and I, you know, we do these coaching calls, right? Zillow is predicting 11% appreciation for real estate prices in 2022. And then I provide the link to the article right there. Okay. So that way, this is just not coming out of my rear end. This is what is out there. And that's what they're telling people. However, they sold their Zillow offered properties, their fix and flip property business and closed it down and lost how much money? $420 million. And then guess what I do? I provide a link to the article. And then I said, question, you knew your house was gonna go up 11% in value in the next 12 months, would you sell it? Or would you wait for it to go up in value some more? Pretty simple question, right? Obviously, anybody with common sense would hold on to that property. So there's my question that bugs the living heck out of me. Then why the four letter word did Zillow sell their Zillow offer properties if they knew that the prices were going to go up? Does that make sense? Right? And then I provide a link to the event 
that Lee and I video. And it's, it's right here on my Facebook. You know how many, eight, 16 comments, right? Just interacting with people that I know on Facebook. Now I can also take this interview and I can post it into real estate Facebook groups. And are you familiar with Facebook group marketing and all that? You know, joining Facebook groups and how much does it cost to join a Facebook group? Zero. How much does it cost to post in the Facebook group? Zero. You know, zero. So those are organic ways to also generate views and views and um, interaction. And then when I get interaction, what do I do? If they like it, oh, I'll check out their Facebook profile. All right, this looks like someone that I would be interested in being a friend with. So I send them a friend request. So I try to engage with them, right? Without being cheesy or, you know, like desperate. I'm not looking for, you know, any dates. I'm just looking for people that liked what I wrote. And if they liked it, I'll friend request them. Thank you for liking my post. You know, send them a little message. Nothing cheesy, just one sentence, right? So it's all about engaging, interacting, and thanking people for the interaction. Not too hard, right? Someone says, oh, you look great today. What are you gonna naturally do? Oh, thank you, right? So if someone likes my post, well, thank you. That's all, simple. So does this, does Brian Raffini teach what I just taught you? He does about the Facebook groups. Does he teach about how to get the engagement off of the uploading your email at database to your Facebook business page? No, he does not. I guarantee you, and I'll put this on video right now, I will outmarket his ass in two seconds. I don't care who the hell he is. Bring it. Because that's how confident I am. And I don't mean this in an arrogant, narcissistic way. I will do that because I know my clients love me. And if your clients know you, like you, and trust you, guess what? They're going to do business with you. So you ain't, you ain't breaking into my force field because I'm in contact with them. I'm... You know who, what I also do with my clients? I'm a resource. You need a handyman? Think of Fred. I'll get you a handyman over to your house. Do you need a plumber? Think of Fred. I'll get you a plumber over to your house. I have a network of people that I use. So you need to be the resource for your clients. You need something? Call me. I'll help you. A real estate attorney? You, I got you. I know some good people, right? Just be a resource for them because if you tell them, I can help you with this because they trust you, who's the first person they're going to turn to? You, right? So just be that person. Be the person where you are helping without anything expected in return. And trust me, that Facebook stuff that Fufini does not teach, that's where the money's at. Now, I own a con, I'll give you my number one best thing that I use for marketing. My number one best thing that I use for marketing, I got a condo in Hawaii, right? You already know what I do with that, right? I'm one of those who didn't use them. Yeah. <laughs> well, you have the opportunity because you won, didn't you? I did win. You did win. Okay. So here's the thing. This is how I get people to call me. Now, not everybody owns a condo in Hawaii, but buy a home with me. I'll let you stay in my condo in Hawaii for free. Perfectly legal to do that. I put that on my sponsored ad that gets out in front of all my previous clients. Guess what my previous clients do? <laughs> they give me a couple of referrals 
And here's the craziest thing. He just said it. The craziest thing. They don't even use it. And that was not my intention at all when I started offering this. It was not my intention. But that's the craziest thing. They don't, they give me the referrals, but then they don't ever take advantage of it. So crazy. It's so, it's like the, what's the rate of return on that in marketing? Infinity? Right? So take this information that I've told you. It's going to be recorded. You'll be able to rewatch it. Everything I said, and if you do half of it, half of it, it will totally change the way you make money with your previous clients. But the most important thing is the content. And the content is what, you know, I help. And Lee has all my content that I use. He has every article that I've written. I write about reverse mortgages. I write this, write this. I have all this content. I just give it to people for free. Here you go. And if, if it, you use it and it benefits you, great. You know, I let people put their company information on it. I just write the article, change the wording to whatever suits your fancy. But I've written all these articles and I let people use the content. So I hope this has been helpful information for you. If you have any questions, I'll be back there with my sons uh, back there with me. We're just hanging out today. And thank you very much for coming. And you guys have a good rest of the day and listen to what uh, these guys are, these smart guys are going to tell you. <laughs> hey, Fred. All right, now that I can breathe. Those of you that have never seen me before, let me catch you back up to speed. Uh, I don't like wearing this suit all day. I'm not the fan. You'll have to forgive me. I haven't slept well. Uh, the dry weather does me in in this town, so I get a little weird and emotional at this point. One year ago, I started this company. I was 40 pounds overweight. My father had died. I'd gone through another bad relationship. Uh, you name it, it happened to me. Uh, I was, uh, there's a guy in the back of the room that will attest to some behaviors around that period that were before that, that were just so wholly remarkable that they don't even, they defy description. Defy description. His exact words after one weekend of watching me and my behavior of trying to destroy myself, I, I have no, I have no clue. We're not even sure how I made it back from Las Vegas to San Diego from that particular weekend. I changed everything about me. And the reason I tell you that story is in, it's a feel good story. There's no doubt, it's great. It's a huge comeback story. I started with nothing when I started this company. It isn't that I lost my ability to be the banker or run these companies that I've run or teach marketing. I never lost those. I just didn't want to do them ever. I was gifted the largest short sale company in North America to me randomly on a Friday afternoon. And I said, no, I have no interest. Right around March, I said yes for some remarkable reason to that person. And I became the largest short sale negotiation company in North America. And I didn't have a company. I didn't have a direction. I was really legitimately 40, 50 pounds overweight. I was taking antidepressants and I was a mess. I was a mess. Uh, so I got on a keto diet and I started taking care of myself. And I noticed immediately the people and the things around me got better fast. People in the back of the room, people that come to my events, people that I coach, they're remarkable. It makes me want to be better. And the one thing I'm really good at, and I didn't want to be, is at marketing. Not kind of good, like I'm working on it with my therapist. Like I have to be the best at marketing. Like it's an obsession of mine at this point. Uh, pretty much everything I do, I try to do it. There's a lovely book out called The Body Keeps the Score. Apparently trauma people tend to overcompensate immensely for things in their life. Uh, so it's to your benefit, what I'm about to teach you. 
These aren't things I think, these are the things that I know will absolutely get you listed. There is no other way. I don't care what your broker told you. I don't care what that coach told you. My running joke about marketing these days in real estate is feel free to go watch the big five videos that they put out right now. And if you can show me one video that shows you how to get a listing, not a listing presentation, not how better to talk to people, not better how to close them. I think all of you can do that stuff already. I think we all know how to talk to people. I think it's a big pile of crap. You know what they say? You need to work harder. It's your fault for not getting a listing. What a load of crap. How about the system's broken? And you won't teach the correct methodology. There are three ways to get listings in real estate, period, period. Number one is through referrals and building your list. And if you don't have a list, I'm going to show you how to build a list. Easy, easy squeezy. We've got some of the cards floating around here today, and the tap cards and all my little tricks of the trick. I found every hack there was. The second is digital marketing. Go be a content creator. Go build your audience. I would definitely recommend a, a man I'd like to call mentor and friend, Seth Godin's. I don't know, pick one. Purple Cow, that's a good one. Tribe Building, that's a good one. They're all the same thing. Go create content. That also feeds your list. Number three, direct marketing. And no, I am not talking about door knocking, cold calling, or mail. Those died somewhere in the 14th, somewhere around having a gin and tonic at two o'clock in a suit and slapping your secretary on the butt. Okay, that methodology is so over, it's over. I know it because none of us want it to happen to us. There has to be a revolution on this stuff in real estate. I feel like every year I start to talk about direct marketing, I'm like trying to convince myself that I must be missing something. But yet it keeps getting pushed. Oh, you should be making 400 calls a day. You should be doing this. You should be, oh, oh. Every time I get an unknown caller on my phone, every time, I do not answer it. I have a property in Monterey Park, California. It is an amazing property. I must get a call from an investor or an agent to sell it or buy it or something at least five times a week since I put it into my family trust. <sighs> I don't know. I haven't figured it out. So uh, that's my whole little take on marketing in general and real estate. Let's teach you how to do it. Let's just cut to the bones of this. Let's start with uh, number one, my favorite methodology, which is the face-to-face -face method and or list building and or referral based marketing. They are all the same things to me. Theoretically, I say that, so I'm not allowed to make assumptions based on four agreements. Theoretically, still the same saying an assumption, isn't it? You all should have a list as Fred was pointing out at past point. You all should. You should. If you're brand new, I will allow for the exception. But other than that, you all should have a list. Now, since I've been doing this for the last 14 years and doing marketing on this topic for the last 14 years, I've created some hacks because I've discovered that even the top real estate people don't seem to have a list. So let's build a list, shall we? So the best possibility is to get a list and always start from a referral-based agreement or from a referral situation. To do that, that means I need to have interconnectivity with that individual, it is that interconnectivity that will ultimately lead to them being a long-term play. I need to create a list on my list. And no, oh, by the way, this is my other pet peeve. Lee, what do you think I should use for a CRM? You have nothing to put into a CRM. What do you need a CRM for? I'm just saying that on video. There will be an agent that will type down something, but there's a magic CRM that probably generates leads, which they don't. A CRM is nothing more than a spreadsheet on steroids that does a couple of cool things. The truth is, pattern pen, sign. Spreadsheet's nice. Your lifeblood as a person in marketing should be three things. Their name, their number, and their email. That's it. When clients have, hire me, this is my whole existence for them. 
Well, don't you care about the address? Well, no, I, I would just be happier to know that there would be a place on the web where I could buy all the data of all the humans that is name, phone number, and email. It would make my life easier. Now, remarkably, people seem to be less protective of their phone number than their email address. So if you decide to start getting email addresses and start sending content or anything to your clients, and when I mean something, I don't mean those pre-cookie cutters. Hey, it's Valentine's Day from your favorite realtor. I want to know how many of those have actually generated listings. Every year when I get them, I'm on a bunch of email lists. I don't click spam on anybody. I just want to know, has that actually worked? This room, I did a whole rant one year about magnets. And this woman goes, I got a listing from a magnet. And I went, okay. <laughs> Tell me the story. And she told me the story of I handed him out like five years ago and then the client finally called. Like, that's not replicatable. That is not something that you were brand new. Like, if somebody got into real estate, could go, madness, five years. But it'll work. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't fly in my book, right? I, I want this now. I get into this debate, especially with the people that I uh, teach and I coach in the marketing that I do this. Well, Lee, I want a listing today. Yeah, so do I. And I want one next week and I want one a year from now. It still comes back to this, right? It's your list, you feed it, you grow it, blah, blah. All right. So there's a, I created what we call the face to face method. It's one of my favorite little tricks of the trade. I am uh, socially awkward haven't noticed <laughs> to say the very least i'm socially off i've gotten better i've gotten better oh have i gotten better by far i've gotten better as a side note that is the greatest machine ever to get a pepsi out of i've never had one of these so cold in my entire life it makes me so happy uh sorry i just wanted to say it out loud for myself my god i hate bottled sodas because they're never cold enough <laughs> This thing is like it came out of a freezer. All right, I'm socially awkward. Back to the story. So I'm socially awkward, and I don't like projection. To which my CEO, who we learned from shortly, pointed out, um, have you ever asked anybody ever out on a date? And I actually had to think about it for a split second and go, no, no, I don't think I ever have. And um, by the way, I've bought five rings and been married twice. I don't think I've ever asked them technically out, nor do I think I ever technically asked them to marry me either. But I mean, it's all right at this point. The reason I tell you that is what I'm about to teach you is sort of foolproof how to meet people so you don't feel weird when they say no. Does that make sense? All right. First problem I see in real estate is we all believe that saying the word realtor is a special word. It is not. It is the least special word on the planet. Uh, in fact, it is the punchline of most jokes on most TV sitcoms. We prefer a different terminology. So for those of you that are brand new, I will teach it to you for showing up today. When asked, hopefully in your day, you put yourself into a situation where at least a couple people ask, what do you do? That should be your whole existence, by the way. Getting people to ask you, what do you do? I say, I fix broken real estate. What? Yeah, yeah, I fix broken real estate. Feel free to use it. Works. Works like a charm. What do you mean? I help people with missed payments and COVID and other situations. You have your phone handy? Yeah, of course. Can you open up a browser page and type in home advocates? When you do, as some of you have checked, most of your students, the front page of my website has all of our advocates listed on the front page. Page one of Google, above real organizations is home advocates at line one. Now, to get this info, you need three little tricks. You need to either get them to like you or trust you, or you gotta be an expert. Let me tell you about the Google trick I just taught you. You just nailed all three without even trying. There's never been a situation where I wasn't able to get their info after that sequence. And I've tested. When Derek does it, he's done. Like he comes back telling me about four parents. 
like those are full conversations. I'm not, I don't do well with homeowners. I'm still a little too much of a banker. Although we do have a recording of me talking to a homeowner that we recently did on a coaching call where I seemed remarkably kind. Although when they did say the word reverse and we were making jokes about the memes you could have put on my face on the Zoom call of, what did you say? Uh, type thing when they said reverse and that was pretty weird. So that's our trip. Now let's actually expand what seems on the surface like a little parlor trip. It's not a parlor trip. Let's move it up one level. Uh, Gilbert has one, right? You've got the card, the, the regular card, right? So you can ramp this up a little bit. He's walking around, feel free to make sure you guys all exchange cards. He's got one of our cards. On the front, just hold it up so it, it on the front is his info, and it's a whole. And on, on the other side is a testimony, a generic one for home advocates. I'm just asking as a question. When I'm looking for people who missed payments or did a forbearance, the trick is for me to brand myself as hard as I can with every person I come into contact with, or have them give up this info. <coughs> The methods I gave you are the ones I teach my students. Now we've expanded on this. Like we've gone deep cuts. Uh, Steven's got one. This is a tap card. I'm big on the tap card. And this is, these are like 11, 15 bucks, 20 bucks, something, maybe. Yeah. But you tap them theoretically when working correctly. And it puts an automatic card on their phone. Not only that, it actually has testimonials and videos and all of my information. Getting me closer and closer to this. Closer and closer every time. I'm starting out from zero. If it were me and I were brand new and I have been asked this question many times, Lee, you had to go get a listing today and you were starting out at real estate. Why don't you ask Tom Perry that question? Sorry. And I recorded that too. I don't know where that, like, that was deep in my soul. I still live in a universe where I want Tom, Mike, Craig, I want them all together and you drop us in a random city and let's see who can get a listing first. And I'd be like that one weird 100 to 1 underdog in the whole scenario. I wouldn't have any problem with that game. I'd be like, oh my God, be the best. Be the best reality show ever. Because I don't think they know. I don't think they know what it would be like to talk to actual people who are sell, trying to buy or sell a house. I think they'd all lose their mind. They just talk to real estate agents for the last two decades. Sorry, that was a rant. Back to the focus. My goal is to keep that info, right? So the question I get, especially we have a couple of brand, brand new agents. And what would you do immediately? I would go where people are. The mask thing is over. Like I would be in Tivoli Plaza at the farmer's market. I would be, and I'd be on the strip. What? No, they're not from here. Okay. What do you guys, like your license works pretty much everywhere. I mean, I don't want to tell you about referrals and how the world works, but it's kind of how the world works. It's kind of the, the myth about being in real estate in general. You really don't need a real estate license. It's kind of a joke. I've had way more fun as an investor since I let my license expire in 96 or whatever it was when I was five. Am I doing that? I keep up with the math. It was eight when I started, so 96, I was in 12, I was in 12 when I left my license to Sticking to it. I was told recently because I have the same birthday as someone else I know that I'm 28. I'm like, all right, if she's 28, then I'm 28. I'm down with this program. Follow me. This, there's no gimmick to this. What, what I see people do is sit behind a computer or feel that they're not working hard enough or they got to knock on doors or they got to sit in a stupid meeting where you got to learn something. Tell me what you guys are learning at these training sessions. Like, I don't get it. I really don't. I'm not trying to be a jerk about it. I don't see how that's a benefit to you getting listed. I don't. You should be out every single day with the goal of talking to five people. That's it. And I don't care where they are. They could be the market. They could be anywhere. My goal, five names on that sheet every single day. And if I'm walking, talking about real estate every single day and doing that format, I 100% guarantee you will get action. 
you will get a listener. And if you don't, feel free, because I challenge my own group with this particular bet. I will come and I will train you straight for an entire day and teach you every marketing thing that I've ever learned over the last 14 years doing. The truth is, I'm not exactly sure why you guys don't go out every single guy, uh, guys and gals. People, you know, agents, there. Hmm. I don't know. Still sounds condescending in a strange way. Um, please, just talk to five people a bit. That's all I ask. That's the best way to get through this. Five minutes. We've actually ran a test in our group. Uh, I knew because Baron would like go get his haircut and come back to stories of four Baron's agreements and loan mods. I'm like, how are you meeting these people? He goes, I just talked to them. Okay. I, I well, I don't do that. So I would I go to get my head shaved, not haircut, my head shaved. <laughs> I don't talk to people. I, 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 this is not happening. I'm working on it. All right, that's method number one. Are we gonna do it? Any questions on your list? I'll tie in all the other stuff, but you gotta start somewhere. And your list has to start. If you're looking for people who technically have missed a payment, really don't have any bad marks on their FICO, that really are invisible at this moment, you wanna know how to find them? Go talk to people. Their friends know who they are. They're not paying their car payments either. They're not paying other things. They're not paying for anything. Their friends know where they are. And unless you're out in the public, kicking over rocks. You're not gonna find it at the moment. Yes? When, when are we gonna know when the FICO system is gonna be back up and running? Well, since you're a coaching student and we've got Fred in the back of the room, I would imagine Fred will be the first one to alert me when the FICO system comes back online. That would be my first notification, I think. The second would probably be the people I know over at uh, mailinglist.org or whatever the name is. I keep up with those guys still, and they sell that data. So they're still saying, <laughs> they, they, they're really shocked by it. But they're ramping up. I mean, they haven't changed their prices. They don't even have a lot of data, and they're still charging absurd amounts of money. And I like those guys. But yeah, they want dumb money for very little data. They're not going out of business. They're just being patient. Soon. Or it's the great reset and we can all buy into the conspiracies and the planet is flat and buy a new robot, whatever you want to do. I don't, at this point, I don't care. I understand why people think they're happening. I would think they're all happening too. Makes more sense than we're just dumb and ignorant, which is really my answer. We just get fed the next problem. And the next problem somehow affects you at your job. And by the way, here's a pill, take this, you'll feel better. <laughs> My answer is be a ketogenic lifestyle. When you cheat, cheat well. I've been cheating for four days. My body is now officially angry with me. And I'm still forcing sugar down it. It's fun. All right, any questions on that? Method number two. Bread. I see red. That's a rush reference. I am killing it today. Red. It's what I named it. It's based on a book. Um, we cleverly called it real estate deals. What it truthfully is, is branding, content, rents, repeat. Every real estate person. I, if your takeaways from this are never to want to work with distressed people, don't blame them. Uh, it's not fun, really. I, I don't think I've ever, I, yeah, there's some rewarding stories. And, and there's people here that will tell you rewarding stories. And generally speaking, it's a bunch of people who don't panic. Somewhat irritates me. They're, the banker inside of me is still irritated by it all. But yeah, I'm sure the people who get help, I'm, I'm sure they're happy. I'm sure it's great. But they are also very difficult people. They believe that the Easter Bunny is going to let them win the lotto and that they're somehow going to get a magic loan mod that will magically mean that they don't ever have to pay for anything again ever in their adult life. Huh. Pizza Rock's model for it. I just got a confirmation. I apologize. Should have been on. All right. 
So I created this program called Red. I tested it for about two years uh, before I actually started putting human beings into it. And basically, I wanted to know, could I take my branding or me, or it didn't really matter what it was. Let's call it a widget for the sake of discussion. Can I make a widget go viral? My answer is no, I cannot make a widget go viral. However, I can get the widget seen by 6,000 people and have 100 clicks on it every single week. That's good enough. I figured that that was safe enough. And I actually tested it, not with just real estate people, I tested it with everyone. Uh, right down to even a crazy boxing show, just for giggles. Um, it all worked. There's a very simple formula to it. I'm going to teach it to you. I don't normally do it, and I don't even normally record what the secret sauce is to my secret sauce, but I'm going to teach you. Step one, you must create content. Uh, people in my group hire me if they can't do it. There's someone here who patiently, he's probably trying to figure out, well, we appear to talk to you today. When will you squeeze in 15 videos? It's a good question. I've been asking myself that one since this morning. And I know it's going to run into you thinking about that question. But thank you for the thought bubble, Mr. Thompson. Even though you didn't have it, I have it for you. Stephen and I sit down once a week via Zoom. We come into videos. I have a video editor. She turns in the content. Generally speaking, it doesn't take long. I don't, you don't, I don't, what is it? Like, you guys all feel like you have to do like 30 minute. Uh, opuses to real estate. I don't know why people are afraid of it. We have cell phones with cameras. If you record content just like this, you are officially the media. You are a content creator. You just have to put it into the universe and put it into the right eyes and branch yourself. Let them know if you're an advocate or realtor if you must. <sighs> Maybe being a realtor will come back. Maybe they will let me in and I can be in charge of the ethics board. <laughs> well, you know, the, the, the truth for the people that have known me, I actually taught the code of ethics in my live presentation for almost two straight years ago. Can everybody agree to this to be part of my program? Great, we've already done it. That's the code of ethics. Kills me every time I do it. I stopped doing it this year because it Killed me every time I did it. Everything's like, that's fantastic. Where did you get it? It's the kind of ethics. So I can be wrong. Maybe it'll make it. All right. I'm going to teach you all my secrets. So, so number one, you got to create content. Content doesn't need to be much more than, in my opinion, anywhere from 31 to 91 seconds. Uh, I usually shoot five, six minutes. If somebody goes on and on, I don't care. I give it to a complete civilian to actually edit and have her make it make sense to her, which is brilliant. In fact, I now give her all content that I create, including this today, where she will have no clue what we're talking about. And I will force her to cut this up into something that makes sense to her. I think this is an incredibly good idea. You know, um, what Lee's telling you right now, this is really, really important because the content is the stuff that you get. Content is key. The content is what grabs their attention to create response. So this is the most important thing. The reason why he's telling you all this is simply because he knows that a lot of people do not implement. So he has taken it upon himself to help you implement it because if you were left to do it on your own, just like the diets on January 1st, they last 30 days. And then after 30 days, what happens? People go back to right where they were before the, you know, December 31st date. So he will do it with you every week. And that's the key to marketing is to be continuous, just like an oil well pumping. They don't stop pumping if they want oil. That's the same. The secret is just doing it every week. It really, truthfully, it's not hard. It's a, it's a short bit. I mean, your end of the work, I mean, when I do the work for others, your end of the work is simple. You just do a five minute shoot. It's the end of the day. I got the rest. We say something pleasant and I try to make it a full 50 minutes. It's like a nice experience. Everybody keeps up on me. It's kind of fun. Now, for those of you that are going to do it on your own, 
like shoot a video for God's sake. What do you do? Like, I don't even understand what the deal is. Like, shoot a video. Like the computers come with screens and cameras and invest in maybe a Logitech high end or something. If you I'm gonna do a thing with Miguel at Pizza Rock for another show tomorrow after like shoot content. Get at it, okay? Whatever it is. And it doesn't need to be long. The only time it needs to be long is if you're doing vlogs or podcasts or video casts or that's when you go long because you're doing a training. And even this will get cut down probably in 15 or 20 minutes by her by the time she's done. Okay? We have content. Now, what do we do with said content? I almost want to turn off the camera. And I'm probably saying to Daniela right now, I probably don't want all my secret sauce out, but since all of you showed up, I am going to tell you what my secret sauce is. Everything in my life is still about even from the videos, but I'm putting it to directly to my demographics of the people that I hunt. I call going on the internet hunting. Like that's what it is. You are putting bait out into an area based on a very specific set of criteria and demographics to achieve the goal that you are after. And probably, yeah, I'm pretty sure Daniela, I don't, I mean, I'm gonna play this for the whole group, but when it gets edited, take this out or just put in a couple of parts. <laughs> I like talking to Daniela on videos now. This is becoming a new thing. Like I'll just in the middle of a video shoot, just go, let's say hi to Daniela who's editing this video right now, knowing that I just made her work that much harder because I just put that in. <laughs> it's now my running joke. I don't know if she had, there was somebody's video in her group. She went, oh my. She just wrote back on one of the videos. Oh my, on so-and-so's video, I went, yeah, I knew it at the time too and did nothing to stop it. I don't edit my own videos anymore. <laughs> that was making me crazy. So once you have your video, anywhere from 31 seconds to one minute and 31 seconds, definitely under three minutes, there is a very young social media influencing kind of guy right there at the back table who will tell you, that dude's got more views than I can even think about with the content. And trust me, under three minutes, Trey, usually? Yeah. Always keep it under three. Always. Always. I mean, Facebook will tell you we want three minutes and one second. Yeah. Shorter the better, cleaner the quicker. You will need somewhere to send people once you put out that video, and they will go to that location. You can use a squeeze page. Uh, lead pages is pretty cheap. Uh, you can use your own personal websites. I don't really care. There's even some collection devices with MailChimp. You should probably learn some of them if you're gonna actually put content up. We go to squeeze page, we squeeze page, a pretty straightforward squeeze page that, in fact, Daniela hated and is currently rewriting. She told me I was too basic. I was boring. Go figure, me being boring. So she's currently revamping Steve Squeeze page, technically. We're having a discussion. All right, so we're gonna send people that. So we're basically throwing this content out. We're attracting exact demographic. We're talking about Mr. Thompson's exact demographic. That would be people who miss pain and who are not miss pain. who are in Nevada. Let's keep it as simple as possible. I tend to prefer demographically speaking females because they are one, smarter, Two, really, I got nothing out of the room from one. <laughs> Two, they make the decisions. They make the decisions. I'm not trying to entertain you guys. That's not hard. That's really not hard. Uh, there, that's not my group. My group is always women, approximately uh, 35 to 40 if we're going by age demographics. I prefer about age 40 and up and under 65. So about 40 to 65 female your target area, you can break it down to Henderson or something. Like you can really micromanage your location if you wanna get that hardcore. My answer to that is Nevada it would be the correct demographic. That's where the license works. Why would I not use it? Same thing in California, I've never understood that. The minute they told me my license was good in California, I started working on California. And if I have to refer, I will. And California is a very long stick. 
And so that's my general sweet spot. Here is what I do to attract that demographic. Right now, Daniela's, Daniela's mad that I'm watching on and off the camera. She's personally amusing to me. All right. Now I'm screwing around with my video editor just for fun. How does Lee get through these events? He screws around with his video editor in quiet little jokes. All right. When you create content, you want to create controversy. Not big controversy. There's a book called Red that I actually base this all on. And it's a company that actually makes good money doing this. It's all based on the title and the physical content, right? I'm not talking about reinventing the wheel here, but I'll give you last week since Stephen knows this already because we did it. The Zillow myth in Nevada. You don't think that's not going to get some clicks? Let me help you out. I haven't even put it up and I know it'll get clicks. Like this is a no brainer in my universe. The Zillow myth in Florida? The Zillow myth in the United States. <laughs> Want to know? This is how the interview went. Question number one, Steve, what do you think about the 11% increase from a company that's basically laid off people and not buying property? I think you can all formulate an answer in your head. Doesn't really matter what it is because Daniela here is going to fix it. For you, whatever. Uh, second, well, what do you say to people? And I'm sure all of you in real estate have encountered this one. What did you feel about the Zillow's estimate? And by the way, you guys have some strong feelings about the Zillow's estimate because you've had them jammed in your face so many damn times. Well, based on everything I've just said, the company that's inflated the market, who's still handing out estimates, that's it. That's, that's basically the video. And, okay, I'll see you guys next week. <laughs> Wrap it up. Ship it off for editing. If you're doing it yourself, keep it simple. Huh? Don't reinvent it. Okay, now we got a content. I got a controversial title, the Zillow myth in Nevada. It's exciting. It's got the words of Vince McMahon. What is it? What is this? Animal aggression, right? It's got that kind of WWE thrill. It's kind of the trick. Ruthless aggression. That's what I was looking. You were gonna. You mentally gave it to me. That's not the word. Ruthless aggression. Yeah. I'm gonna brand myself. I'm going to brand that man. I'm going to brand my agent ruthlessly, and I'm sticking it in everybody's face. Now, when you do this, there is a downside. And this is a new thing that I'm starting to adjust to. You'll get negative comments. And I seem to obsess on negative comments and need to know everything about the person who wrote the negative comments. I'm not doing very well. I usually, me personally, in the content I put out up until a few months ago when I really kicked this program into high gear, I was doing 10,000 views or so a week. There's a difference between 10,000 and 100,000. Like there's a huge difference when you start going up. Plus I tie everybody's content together and swim that out on the web too. So it's me with all of them swimming this giant raft. And apparently I am the center point of all hatred when it comes to people missing pain. Because guess what? You want to know what everybody thinks? Nobody's ever missed a pain. And you're just trying to scare everybody. Apparently, I am an asshole. Um, I am from questionable heritage, and I have been told to do things that I am absolutely positive are anatomically impossible. Oh, well, I got clicks. I got that box filled up. And if I got to take a little hate and hurt for it, I'll deal with it. That's the downside to being online. There's no way around this. Like, I can't figure out a safe way to circumnavigate the hate. I'm getting better at just not dealing with them. We had a situation with a lovely boxing show that I do where somebody made the mistake of bringing something up from a decade ago. And I researched the person's life, how much money he made, like went on a full rent, and then put his social media up. And like, it, was, it was a little extreme on my part. Funny. But so for you, I'm just trying to help you out. So you got your minute 30, you got your controversial title. Like what? I hate the streets in Las Vegas. I don't care. It's really not that hard. You got to keep it all as simple as possible. The problem is a little overcomplicating these things. The construction in downtown, the found found blue. Pick one. 
There's so much in this town to make fun of. Somebody getting shot every three and a half seconds, one block off the strip. I don't know. Pick something. But you want people to stop. When they stop and when they watch you, you are now the news. Congratulations, you're the media. <laughs> Bigger than Fox 5. Is that a good word? Thank God. It's really hard because I think we're Fox 8. I have YouTube TV now. I can't keep up. My YouTube TV adjusts everywhere I go. I just plug in. I don't even use a local TV. YouTube TV is the greatest thing ever. And apparently, it's got an algorithm and it knows what I like. <laughs> And right now, we sorry I'm on a ramp, but boy, do I love cooking competition shows. And I have a real crush on Alex Warner Shelley. Boy, do I have a crush on her. Oh, my, 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 my. Better than Bobby Flay. And I had a big Bobby Flay crush. You are now the media when they stop. Now, I, in one of the rarest moments that I've ever presented, and I cannot believe how far ahead we are in the day. Is that for real? Like I haven't really, is that clock wrong? Are you telling me that I'm on time for a rarity? I am as shocked as the rest of them. Normally by now we'd be deep cutting on something else that I'm on a rant on instead of me actually getting to the core of this stuff. But in an hour, Jesus. I used to speak for eight hours at my event and I'm not even sure I said anything. Got my mind. I know my demographic. First thing I would recommend if you were doing this yourself and not hiring a professional, you should join every home group on Facebook. On Facebook. You should join the Henderson backyard sales, family groups, whatever you can join in your city Join it. Buy, sell, backyards, garage, kittens, puppies. If it's got your city name, Las Vegas, Henderson, Summerlin, Perum. They said Perum. Chelsea, of course, she loved that. She had to go do a BP on Perum. And I had a bunch of Perum material today. The Martians one. It, it, you couldn't have paid me enough to do a BPO in Toronto. There's no way, no way. No, just mentally, you couldn't pay me enough to drive to Toronto. I'm sorry, there are probably one. Anybody from Toronto? I'm sorry if I offended your Torontiness. <laughs> this is back to my old Wiccan joke. I'll keep doing Wiccan jokes until I meet a Wiccan and then I met a Wiccan and the Wiccan said, nope, it's funny, keep doing the joke. Cool. All right. Target your studies, be a part of every group socially. Now, since you're now the media, it's okay to share real content in those groups. Because you're not doing sales pitches, are you? You're just reporting the news. Now, he knows this. We don't sales pitch in our videos. We do not sales pitch. Sales pitch, no. No video, no sales pitch. Fred does a radio show. No sales pitch. That's commercial. We're not doing a commercial. We're doing content. You are the media, even if it's just for 90 seconds. However, there's this really cool little feature. If we're just talking Facebook for a split second, where you can have this learn more. And remarkably, when you get, say, a thousand people, about 10% of them seem to click that learn more button. And they find out more about home advocates. So at the end of the day, this is constantly being pounded in Mr. Thompson here. It's not if he gets a deal, it's when you get a deal. Now here's the problem with doing digital marketing, funnel marketing, email marketing. Lee, I want a listing today. Don't we all? Truth be told, this is funnel marketing. You have to build a funnel and you have to continually do this stuff to make the funnel work. The minute you stop, you might as well stop. This isn't like one of those, I'll do it when I have a very, I'm recording again, and I feel a very big rant, and that's why you're shaking me off right in the back of the room. This is a great moment. I'm ahead of my day. A very good friend. 
You will never see this video, so it doesn't matter. But she is the shittiest digital marketer I've ever run across in my career. Like she will buy the latest and greatest. Hi, hire me. I'm the person in this area, right? And pay for all the high end stuff and pay ungodly amounts of money for these drops and these knees and all this horse crap, right? And then stop doing it after like three weeks. That's not how it works. That's literally not how it works. Like you have to do it all the time. And by the way, those stupid little meme things you can buy that cost like 300 bucks a month where they auto post pictures of you, basically with that pose of being the next agent or whom you're, all that crap, that doesn't work either. Nobody's stopping and looking at it. You know why? You're selling. You know why your videos don't work? I don't care how good your background is. You're selling. Our videos are kind of punk rockers, to be honest. I mean, I sit in the studio with green screens and make it all look like a million bucks. These guys are all on Zoom. I don't even try that hard. I'm getting a thousand. I'm getting a thousand people a week. A thousand people a week looking at that man. And a hundred learning more. Not if, when. The second thing I do with the content, since Steve is now the media, hey, spend 20 bucks. What? Yeah, spend 20 bucks a week. You're telling me you wouldn't spend 20 bucks a week to get a thousand views? Let me tell you, that dollar to dollar when we do a cost effective ratio discussion, that's a good discussion. That's all it costs to get Facebook's algorithm to love you correctly. And trust me, it has to love you correctly. Why? I'm creating content that isn't technically controversial, that isn't really about housing or anything crazy, which gets me around to all their little weird protocols. I'm actually sharing it in other groups and other pages where people are interacting with me. And then at the last minute, I give the almighty Facebook $20 to be on their platform. And you know what they do? They give me another thousand views too. Exactly for 35 plus year old women, exactly in Clark County, exactly in my demographic. Winner, winner, chicken dinner, all that. That is actually the biggest portion of my secret sauce for red music. The second, used to be YouTube and Google until for whatever reason, Google and YouTube, they're synonymous in my opinion. Um, YouTube, their algorithm changed at the first of the year. So I just doubled up more on Facebook. So when people ask me right now about digital, Facebook's dead, Instagram's dead. No, Instagram and Facebook are very much alive and they own everything and they're creating their own universe and they're selling real estate in that universe now. In fact, they're the only social media platform. I have been told it's TikTok. I've been told it's YouTube. I have been told, you name it, over the last decade. Gil's another content trace. We've heard everything throughout the years. It Till the day we die, it's going to be Facebook and YouTube. Those are going to be the only two companies on the planet. Yeah, TikTok's cute. I know real estate agents who get listings on TikTok. Well, at least they're creating content. I mean, stupidly, and embarrassingly in their offices doing embarrassingly things. But guess why their videos work? It's entertainment. It's entertainment. They're not selling, they're entertaining. I'm not making us entertaining. In fact, I'm pretty sure that Steve and I together, we're not entertaining for anybody who stops to watch us. It seems very, I'm not doing anything to make it entertaining. Occasionally I'll spice it up with a few tidbits and so will Steve. It's kind of boring. I mean, and I do about 30 of them in a row. So by the time I say get to Steve at two o'clock, we've talked a lot about Zillow today in my mind. Last week was a little rough one. That, that was a I was a little sketchy by about three or four o'clock. That's why I get paid the big bucks. That's why I get to go to multiple concerts. Shanae Twain tonight. Let's go, girl. <laughs> I can't believe how far ahead I am at this moment. And I actually gave real content this year. Like I really gave out my secret sauce. And I'm just wondering how much of this Danielle is actually gonna let me keep on the video that I could put out as a general kind of sales video or something in the future. For the coaching group, it's good. They should know what I'm doing. So I created this program, SideNote, which I don't think I sell anymore. Is it even up anymore? I keep wondering whether or not the forward slash events page is still up, but I was still taking clients up until like a week ago or two weeks ago. 
So he only pays like a hundred bucks a week for this program. So, and I use 50% of that in actual marketing costs. Like I make $50 a week for doing this. As Derek likes to point out on days that I spend an absurd amount of money on marketing costs and the bills can occasionally be somewhat absurd when I'm testing products because this is still technically a test. It's not perfected because I'm still here. I've got the volume and I've got the people coming in. I've now got my news crew across the United States. And so when I'm teaching people, I've always just said, just create it, put it out, I warrant. And they'll, yeah, they'll click, you just send them somewhere. When you're talking in the thousands and in the numbers, we're talking about the funnel needs to be more refined. It's not a CRM thing. I just don't know. It's bothering me. This is the problem when you develop new marketing. There's always going to be tweaking, tweaking, tweaking. But as an educational source for those of you that have never seen me before, or somebody watching this video, depending on what Daniela leaves in, just put something up. Just make content. Be a creator. Just stop selling. Stop being a realtor and put it online. Yeah, I guess TikTok works. And if you want to go organize the office to go do a can can or something silly, it's like the latest one I saw. But what, it gets me listings. I'm sure it does. Just like magnets. I'm sure it does. I guarantee these methods. I guarantee that man will listen. Guarantee. He gets his money back. Guarantee. My direct marketing that I'm about to teach you with my final three minutes. I guarantee those results. And I guaranteed those 14 years ago. And this darn thing still works. And I tell people how it works. Any questions on digital marketing since I've given away the family secrets? I'm having a really good day up here. Shockingly good. As a side note, spraying tomatoes and then being on Percocet with a good Pepsi produces a good event. You should replicate this one in the back of the room. I don't move as much either when I have a spring day. I have a scooter as a side joke. I have, I have an electric scooter and I take it with me on vacation. I was in a 7-Eleven parking lot and uh, as you may or may not know about 7-Eleven parking lots, they're not well clean. Uh, and I might've caught a little bit of oil and watched the scooter come out from underneath me yesterday at 20 miles an hour. It was um, cranked right down on my, put my back too. Didn't stop me. Went out last night at midnight and watched all kinds of craziness on it. <laughs> all right. Last one, direct marketing. Is there anybody? I'm way ahead. I'm so far ahead. It feels like we've been doing this for like 15 hours. Normally I'm like sweating at these points, but oh, I'm so behind. How will I get it in? Okay. Direct marketing. Please do direct marketing. I don't think there's anybody here who doesn't know my direct marketing program. Like, I don't, I don't know if I need to, like, I mean, I get it for shitting the content, but I'll teach you what I invented. I invented a program 14 years ago. I called it Monster Marketing. I was sitting in Anaheim when this guy came up to me, said, oh, I got this great marketing method. I said, what is it? I put FedEx labels on people's houses and those calls go straight to my cell phone. And I went, that would be fraud. <laughs> um, and that is going to get you to lose your real estate license. All right, that's where I heard that first notion. I've never heard it anywhere else. So once again, going back to a man I'd like to call mentor and friend, Seth Godin, the man who changed my life in 2010 and made me an obsessive compulsive marketer. I read Permission-Based Marketing, which is the single greatest book ever written on marketing period, ever, ever, ever. If your clients don't select you, you shouldn't even put in the effort. Cold marketing is dull, unless you've got money for the Super Bowl. And even then, I'm not even sure that that's a good point. Like that doesn't seem cost effective either. So I wanted to know, let's just say I had a list. Let's just go in the other direction. Let's go with geo-targeted data, which they don't teach you this in real estate. So I'm gonna actually give you a general how to get real estate listings moment. Step one, you need targeted data. And you're, you can get it in real estate. You can get probate, you can get divorce you can get stuff. Real estate agents will, not you guys, the other ones, will generally try to sell me that expired and canceled is targeted data. 
My answer to that, number one, is no, that is not targeted data. Uh, number two, there are already 500 people that have called them, and I don't like waiting in lines. It's a personal pet peeve of mine to stand. I don't like lines. Tony Stark, don't hand him anything. Me, I don't stand in line. I just, I'll let someone else do it. I did it last night for Super Bowl like a champ. I was better Xanax for it, but I don't do lines. I just, Derek and I had to like tough it up man style. Like who gets the worst, Derek got the worst. He had to go place the bet. I had to wait a car month to get it. I, I, I took the shorter line. It was still tough. And even then, Terry was like, do you want to sit and wait and I'll stand and I'll just with another friend? No, I'll be a big boy today and wait in line. And I was miserable the entire time. I hate lines. Why do people in real estate wait in line? I don't understand this methodology. Oh, they're expired. Maybe I should hide in a bush and tackle them tomorrow morning to let them know that I'm their next realtor. <laughs> I know I'll buy them a basket full of crap that they'll never use and put that on their porch. That should cost me about what, 50 bucks a thing. Magnet, here's a magnet moment. Magnet, <laughs> So you need targeted data. I don't care what you wanna work on. Probates, divorce. Since today is about distressed property, distressed property. How do you get distressed property data? It's not very difficult. If you're a part of my group, you just go back and see the guy in the shirt over there and go, give me some names. He's pretty good at it. Option number two, property radar. Option number three, realty track. Both of which right now come with 30 days for free, I think, on both of their sites. Good sites. Option number four. God, I'm very concise today. Can't do it. Like, I'm actually shocked that I'm not all over the place. <laughs> Therapy works. Um, I'm starting to think that my trauma made me all over the place. And that my therapy has made me write that down. I'll have to discuss that on Tuesday. Uh, some of this is just for me. The other option is get yourself a decent title rep who can get you the data. If you'd like a reference, we always recommend Fritzy Ortiz here locally. Go to the back of the room. Lovely gentlemen's over in the corner will be happy to talk to you about it. Okay, we now have targeted data. What are you looking for? I don't care if the sale's tomorrow. I might be doing this as a personal plea to my own coaching group, but Lee, the sale date's tomorrow. Should I go talk to him? Yeah, I think you should. Ah, oh, the sale date's passed. Is it still in their name? I feel like a character in a movie sometime. Doesn't matter. I don't care if it's 90 days. I don't care if it's 120 days. I don't care if it's an NOD. I don't care if it's an NOS. I don't care if it's here. I don't care if it's there. I don't care where it is. Eat the green eggs and ham, Sam, I am, for God's sakes. It doesn't matter when the sale date is. My God, this is a pet peeve. I didn't realize how big it was until this exact moment, how crazy this statement makes me. Derek gets it too. Well, the sale date's tomorrow, Derek. The sale date's, oh my God, what do I do? Here's an idea, talk to him. I, revolutionary idea, have you talked to him yet? No, because the sale date is tomorrow. I'm gonna strangle one of my agents one of the days with the phone and hopefully my therapy will keep me from having that actually happen. I still, <laughs> still a phone cord, how old am I? <laughs> All right, targeted data, does not matter. Use whatever you can get your hands on right now. I think in Nevada, you're currently working in three to 4,000 people plus or minus. Like the whole Clark County is maybe three or 4,000 posted defaults right now. It's a really low number. And you're, you're not gonna get a lot of competition right now. There's, and they all seem to generally be older demographically speaking with weird reverse hands. Like it's still tier two lenders. This is a well shaped database stuff. They're not quite online. But this is to get your feet wet at doing it, right? Go out and meet them. They're actually very sweet people. The, the homeowners that I've talked to from Florida to Nevada, they're all very nice people. They're very confused and they're being taken advantage of by investors ridiculously right now. My God, investors are being ruthless with them. Ruthless. Here's some cash. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. Oh no, we'll make your payment. Just deed the property of the coast. Got it. 
It's happening a lot. Not digging it. Happens a lot in California. I don't know how to stop. Except to just keep doing live content and going, you investors suck. Um, there's no, it's legally okay to do what they're doing. I mean, they're not, it's just shitty. I mean, that's the bottom line. It's, it's morally reprehensible, basically. All right, so we target. We've got people. We need a method. Well, everybody knows the method except for two of you in this room, or maybe, maybe three. Ooh, no, two or three. Uh, my direct marketing method. Voila, let's go back to Anaheim from 15 years ago. That FedEx idea wasn't a bad idea. You just had to improve on it a little bit, so I did. So I made a label that looks like a FedEx label, and I created a delivery company. It's really what I did, and I'm telling you my real method that I make a lot of money with for real. He knows, it's a label, put their last name, a tracking number on it. We actually have an automated call center with brand new scripts in it now. I just rewrote it recently. They call up, we tell them what's happening. We miss payments. We want to send Steve over to go talk to you about your alternatives to foreclosure. We disclose. It's not first point of contact. So Steve doesn't have to put his real estate license number on it. And when they're shitty and pissy because people who miss payments are shitty and pissy, they're mad at me and home advocates, not you. I think it's brilliant. They don't call the DRE on you. They, uh, they put a label on my house and told everybody that I'm Mr. Peppermint. No, nope, public data. Shut up. It's the truth. Let me be a real banker about this. The only people who ever seem to get mad is when you tag a real estate agent's house. Those people lose their mind when they get tagged. Oh, they hate me. Oh. Everyone knows. You know, you know that I know, and somehow that bothers me. My favorite, they by far my favorite people, by far. I'm gonna get you out of business. I'm gonna be, no, 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 no. I'm actually a continuing education teacher in three different states. I actually over disclose more than any other marketing or coaching program on the planet. And my marketing has been reviewed for the last 14 years by every single state that we've been in. Flies through, here's what, they call up. We tell them what's going on. We tell them why we're coming over. We tell them we're sending an advocate. Our advocates go over and teach them nine things, which is what we want them to do. And guess what? Got a new name for the list and a client for life. The game continues. That's my direct marketing. I have no other, like theoretically you could do it with probates and divorces and everything else. I, and I actually have all that hard data somewhere in what we call the archives. But truth be told, that method of delivering you with your message is holy and awesome. It's been running for 14 years. It was the first guy to ever guarantee face-to-face -face results from marketing and real estate. And people thought I was out of my mind. Until we got people face-to-face. -face. And then I discovered you believe that the word face-to-face -face means listeners. <laughs> Sorry, it's still funny. It's 14 years later and I still find that funny. My answer is once I perfect red or if I could figure out how to do my direct marketing without needing an agent's help, why would I ever need any of you? I'd be on a boat in the Amalfi waiting for the next lead to come in. It would be a massive referral network and it would be Fred on this side. It would, it would be like Charlie's Angels except with Weird middle-aged guys in the Amalfi with bad shirts and straw hats. And we gotta get chest hair for that. We gotta look really disgusting. Now you need to learn the nine alternatives. Hmm? Derek, yeah. Mr. CEO, yes, sir. can you come up here and talk about nine alternatives for a quick second? What a nice segue. Then we'll do Q and A. I can't believe how far ahead of schedule we are. I keep looking at that clock in the back of the room. We're an hour and 15 minutes ahead. This is not my event. <laughs> I, you gotta figure out how to get more of whatever happens to you today. That might be the most important. <laughs> I'm Derek Kelly. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. It's great to be back in Las Vegas. 
-hmm. We did our first event here last March, and it's nice to see everyone here. Lee and both Lee and Fred talking about online presence. Clicks, likes, subscribe to my site. Again, the marketing works. Home advocates, we're getting these clicks for you. Now, we talk about our referral list and Fred will talk to you to death. He will talk about this because he believes in it. This works. Getting my referrals, when I look at my list, it's simply going through my emails and I communicate phone, email, text. But again, email works best for, for creating content and, and getting your list. I worked for the New York Times company for 20 years and, and we talked a lot about media today. You know, being able to establish yourself, being able to create content, Lee tells you your media. Again, we, we went out last night watching the Super Bowl, watching the ads. You know, they pay a million dollars for 36 spots on a Super Bowl ad. And again, any favorite commercials come up last night? I, I happen to see one that I like, a product that I use, Irish Spring. You know, I grew up in Boston. That was the soap I always used. And then Fred didn't mention this, but again, self-effacing works with your clients. And I, I happened to mention to Fred during dinner that when I was married, you know, I used to use my wife's, you know, deodorant, you know, secret, because it worked better than mine. And again, we, Fred went, we, you know, threatened to tell everyone, I, I'll, I'll sell for facing, I'll tell everyone, I use secret. I use a women's deodorant. Why? Because it works. It works better than the men's stuff. It works better than Irish Spring or give me another couple brands, Fred. Uh, Dove. 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 Okay, yes. Irish Spice, whatever that was. <laughs> <laughs> I like Secret because it keeps me higher. Again, if I'm speaking or if I'm coaching I'm up in front of a room, I feel the anxiety. I feel that anxiousness when I'm talking to a client. But again, if you can laugh at yourself a little bit, and again, it relieves any tension, anxiety, again, when you're speaking to a client. If I'm talking to Steve here, and again, I want to build that connection. It's not just about, you know, closing them. Uh, it's about, again, ABC. We talk about it. Everyone knows what the C is, right? Not content. <laughs> I want to close them or again, I hate the word close. I hate it. I'm not trying to close. I'm not trying to take from them. Again, it's always be caring. As you're as an advocate for these people, you want to be communicating and connecting. This doesn't work in foreclosure real estate. It doesn't. Because again, they're already feeling the pressure. They don't want to be introduced to you. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to talk again because they're ashamed. They're, they're in a state, such a financial state that again, they don't see any way out. And again, we might not have, you know, coming in white, you know, white night to save the day to rescue them. But again, we can at least get them in action, finding the alternatives. And there are alternatives to foreclosure. And again, Lee, the first one is they bury their head in the sand. They do nothing. If they do nothing, they lose the house. A transaction will happen with or without the permission. And again, you want to give them the dignified solution. Just taking the time and going there. Some of you have been on appointments. If you've been in Lee's program, getting in front, what do you say? And that, that's, that's the secret. Again, there is no secret of what exactly to say. It depends on who they are, where they are in this process whether they're 31, 61, 91 days late. Again, where are they? We're not trying to close them. We're trying to connect with them. Communication, connection, and caring. That's my C, and it works. Fred talks about likability and trust, and, and with Lee, 20% of the conversion comes from the expertise. But again, the likability and trust will convert 80% of the time. Get your clients. Fred talks about you know, having, having that wow moment. Again, trip to Hawaii sounds great to me. And I'm going to take advantage of that, Fred. I want to go in March. But again, having that wow moment to inspire them, to, to make them feel like they're special. That's what we need to do for all our clients. We, we need to make them feel important. And how do we do that? We listen to them. 
Discovery questions, where are they in this process? Do nothing, partial claim, deed in lieu, bankruptcy, reinstatement. These are their alternatives. But again, the one that monetizes for us is listing. We're not, trying, we, we're not able all the time to save the home, but we want to save the equity. Everyone has equity now. Again, if we can do that, we will save that house. We'll save the equity. And again, Fred talks about resources. They need this, they need a handyman. Again, the more network, the more resources you have in this industry for foreclosure to help them, that's what's gonna move this. And again, engagement, movement, it comes. Again, we got some new, new, new agents here today. Anyone heard Lee before? Anyone not heard? I don't think I recognize you. What is your name, dear? Chrisette. Chrisette? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Have you heard Lee speak? I think so. Okay. Are you an agent? Yeah. How are you doing up there right now? Okay. You doing good? Mm -hmm. How long have you been an agent? Uh, going on four years. Okay. Uh, which which realtor? Yeah, which uh, select properties. Okay. So if you're new into have you done any foreclosure real estate? No. Any questions? I'm sure, you got a million, but <laughs> can I put you on the spot? Sure. One question: If you ha had one thing to learn from today, what would that be? Not just how to market it, how to move it. The secret sauce. Is it in the figures? Is it in the data? Is it in the relationship that you build with these clients, with these homeowners that need you? Again, if you're an advocacy, you can provide the value. Getting on that front page, educate yourself, learning it so you can teach it. That's what moves us. And again, establish the relationship, get the name, follow up. Very simple. And there's a lot of ways to do it. Some will say, use this script, use that script. I hate scripts and I hate the word flows. I just wanna be genuine, authentic, I want to show them that I have warmth. I know what I'm talking about and I care about them. I don't want to see them lose what they have. You know, the most prized possession is their home. Security, everything's tied into that home. So again, if our figures are right, if the data is right, there are going to be a couple million of these over the next couple of years. So again, can we set ourselves, get, get to the front of the line, learn how to help and advocate for these homeowners? It's there. So any questions on conversions? What are some good, good ways to, again, when you're, when you're in front of these people, what's the first thing you need to ask them? Gilbert's been on a couple calls. He's, he's recorded some content. Ask them where they are, what the bank has done to them. What did the bank do, do to them? What's that? How many payments are they behind? Discovery questions. You know, get them to talk. Tell them a little, little bit about yourself. Tell them one or two things about yourself. I love to do the three and three because again, Tell three things about yourself, ask them three things about themselves, whether it's where they are in the, in the foreclosure, how long they've been living in this home, where they're from originally, little things, just little things. People call them icebreakers. I just call it getting to know somebody and, and being genuinely interested in them. Again, you're there for a purpose. You have a reason to be there. Yeah, John. My favorite question is, do you have, do you have a plan B? Do you have a plan B? Great question. It's in, it's in our scripts. But again, if, the, if they go through all the nine alternatives and they don't like any of them, what do we say then? What's your plan B? What's your plan B? Yes. I, I kind of asked it like, um, I know it would be great if we could figure out a way for you to stay at home. You probably want to go out for the rest of your life there. But if that didn't work out, what else would you do? And that kind of got her to go, you know, I don't really, I really would like to just open my house and get a place to live. Wow. And they, and they could, again, it's a little nudge at some points with these homeowners, and I've talked to them on the phone, you know, and, and they'll tell you, 
you know, it seems like delusional thinking is going on with these homeowners. They don't really, they're not really in reality. And I think our job as advocates is to get them into reality where they are, you know, Fred. So this is the part of the business that I actually appreciate the most. And for me, it's about gratification from what you do. And really, if you care, you know, and he says, always be caring. I think this is where you really can show it. If you do care, like you have to genuinely care. And so my job, my, my attitude is like my son, he wants to become a doctor. Okay, but before you do that, he'll, 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 I've had this conversation for a lot of time. I said, let's go talk to some of my clients who are doctors and let's ask them. Okay, sorry to bring him up. <laughs> I know he, he probably doesn't want me to talk about this, but I, what kind of doctor is going to be the best doctor? And let's figure out if that doctor gets gratification from what they do. Because I know a couple surgeons. That have been doing it for 30 years and they're sick of waking up at three in the morning and getting over to the hospital it just wears on you over time and they get gratification from what they do but there's the law of diminishing return from that type of job so then then so if, it, if i wasn't a surgeon the, the next job that i would like or the next job that in my opinion that I would get gratification from would be, you know, what is, think about what type of job you would have to get gratification from what you do. And guess what? To me, it's saving people money. I say, I'm not a doctor. I don't save people's lives, but I do the next best thing and I save them money. Now, I even take that a step further because I'm Jewish, right? What do Jewish people like to do? They like to save money. So I'm just, you know, helping my people out. That's all. You know, but that's, I can get away with that. Those words, right? And then if I wasn't, uh, you know, saving people money, and then, you know, think about the jobs that you could have that would save people money. Mm -hmm. CPA, you know. So you got to look for me, if I help save their house from foreclosure, I truly get gratification from that. If I put a bad guy in jail, because if I was a detective, I would truly get gratification from that. Yeah. Truly, I would. So, so if you can take this job and say to yourself, you know what, I get gratification from this, and then that caring comes naturally. Yeah, you feel good. You do something, you know, caring and, and warm for somebody. Again, it's just the vibe from them is it's hard to say no to somebody that you like, you know. And, and again, that's what I want to establish. I don't look at my clients like they're ATM machines. I'm just going up and putting in my four digit code and withdrawing money from them. I don't look at my clients like that at all. They're friends. I want to help them. I, I want to service them and I want to make their life easier. I want to provide value. And again, the wow moments come and they add up. You know, Fred mentions it. And again, I want to create that for my, for my clients. I want them to, to be like, wow, I can't believe he did that for me. And again, all the things you see in sales, how to, how to approach them, how to, how to marry yourself to them. Again, there's, there's a lot to do with building rapport. But it, at the end of the day, it just starts by simply connecting with them. What can I do for you? How can I help you? Get their thoughts, get their feedback on the situation. Don't tell them what to do. That I never tell anyone, any of my clients. I offer them what I know. And again, owner of Compass says it all the time. Learn everything you know from everyone you know. If you can do that. And, and again, being in this industry, even though real estate is relatively new for me. And again, I, I'm not a real estate agent. I'm a coach. I, I deal with people. And, and again, not everybody's going to like me. doesn't matter. I, I know at, at the, I know what my motives are when I go and meet a client. You know, I, I know my motives. I want to, I want to help them first. And at the end of the day, I want to, I want to earn a living. 
but I want to I want to provide a service. We talked about helping a million homeowners, and that that's a big deal. And if we can do that, that's going to be a great thing. You know, moving forward, post COVID, post pandemic. So hopefully, this marketing will continue to do what we think it's going to do, and there'll be opportunities. And Fred said it, you know, there's going to be a lot of opportunities in the coming years. But you got to get in front of them. You got to be able to establish credibility, like trust. All of these things are, are key to making this work. So we're, we're, we're glad to be here. You know, I like Las Vegas. I know Lee's a big fan of this town. And, and again, it can start here. You know, what are you going to do today? To improve, I've, you know, I, I've been on this keto. Lee talked me into the keto diet about I don't know five six weeks ago. I lost 15 pounds in a month. Yeah, I don't get bread and rice and some of my favorite things anymore. But again, we've been cheating for two days, so it's been good here in Vegas. But again, if you don't do something to improve, again, sometimes it's experiment with different things. I never thought that I could just eat greasy fat and meat and lose weight. I mean, I mean, bacon grease. I mean, we're frying up bacon in a, in a crock in a crock pot, you know, to five pounds of bacon. But again, can you try something different that might, you know, until you try it, you'll never know. So get out there, meet the people, get in touch. We can put you in front of these homeowners. And again, script them down. If you like the word close, I like the word care, and I like, like the word connect. That's my ABC. So I'm always connected. Always connect with your clients and always communicate. And if you show that, the advocacy angle works. And I don't like to call it an angle, but it's a nice way to get into the front door. You're there to help them. So I hope you do. And it's nice to see you all today. Enjoy the day. Like I'm hobbling more. That's bad. I'm gonna make it tough tonight when I go to Shania. Okay. I don't have glasses. This will be fun. That was fun. And we recorded it.